Hey everyone, it is SVT time. Welcome. I'm Dino Monoxilis. It is Tuesday. I almost forgot the day there. It's Tuesday, December 5th. This is episode 61 of SVT time. Um, well, Dom is having difficulties, uh, technical difficulties trying to get in. So as soon as he gets in, we'll uh we'll call him into the studio but he's he's working out his he's working out his kinks there uh with me today man i'm so excited to be able to talk with i've known alex it's been a few years now but um just been following it, the, the meteoric rise of uh of of alex's career and of course with noah khan so uh alex man thank you for joining us this is awesome oh it's an absolute pleasure to be here thanks for having me on dino no nah, dude it's like i said it's uh it's been a little bit coming, but, uh, yeah, it, you're home now. You, I, I know you guys have been like, you guys have been busy. Yeah. We're we were gone. Like, I don't know, like 215 days last this past year. So I'm home. My, my dog who's sitting at my feet, she won't leave my side. <laughs> you know, she's happy to have her dad home. So yeah, it's great, man. I'm having a, I'm having a blast being home, but this has been an incredible year, you know, an incredible ride I've been on for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Where, where is home for you now? Uh, I live in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that as well yeah. and life in Nashville. But, uh, but man, I, I gotta say, you know, literally when I say meteoric, like you guys were just on Saturday night live this past Saturday. Yeah. And, and <laughs> yeah, I know that's, you know, th yeah, it's like, that's, that's like, that's one of the bucket list things for any musician right oh my god yeah I, and it was just and look i mean like i had to tell myself like you know this is the first time on snl and it could most likely be the last time on snl nah. so you just got to go for it you know and have fun you never know what tomorrow's gonna what's gonna happen tomorrow the next day or whatever and um yeah man and i mean it's been this last real year uh has been i it's hard to really explain i've never really even seen anything like it um part partly because it's just been so organic um you know i've been with noah for seven almost seven years and uh you know played guitar for the first you know five and a half and then played bass move over to bass uh after that and you know once i started doing bass full time it's just been boom to the top just every really? week every month has just gotten crazier than the last and um yeah i'm just so grateful you know that that's fantastic. I, I, you know, I, not, and forgive me because I butchered your last name. It's Bashari, not Bacari. yeah, it's Bashari. Yeah. Bacari. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they, I've heard been, it been called a lot worse. It's okay. <laughs> no, I remember backstage we were talking, and and I remember you. We were comparing last names between Monarch. Yeah, and you get it <laughs> exactly. I I I had the uh, I had a a bank call me yesterday, and the poor girl. You know, she's from the South too. So you, they, you don't see my last name very much in the South. And she's like, she just finally gave up. She goes, I'm sorry, hon. What can I just call you Mr. Dino? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's what that I, I respect that more than people trying, you know, it's like, you know, it's okay. Exactly. It's okay. It's not, it's yeah. Dom, you made it, buddy. Hey, man. Dom. Hi, Alex. How you doing? Well, I'm doing well. Thanks, man. <laughs> it wouldn't be an SVT time without technical difficulties. So, right? I'm glad I'm running now. It <laughs> turned out I just needed to restart my computer. You know, get old. It's an Apple. Just reboot it. There just you go. It. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that venture looks good there behind you. Hey, man. I you know <laughs> y'all uh, hooked me up with this thing um, a couple weeks ago, and man, I, I'm really liking it. It's a great. It's a great little piece, man. Like. A lot of you know for a small little 300 watt amp i mean it's there's a lot going on with it yeah. so yeah. now alex you were using um you were using portaflex for a while in fact that's kind of how we met yeah so the way we met my good friend and fellow ampeg artist uh brian allen yep. um uh, he's one of my uh good buddies in town and i always you know when i so we'll get into it but i'm you know, by trade, uh, you know, a guitar player for 25, 26 years. Right. Um, and, uh, and so, um, when I, um, uh, when I started playing bass, Brian was one of the first guys I went to and was like, Hey, you know, I'm playing bass, anything you got, any advice, any connections, I would love it. Like, I like, I love, you know, I played 
some bass on sessions before and played SVTs and, um, and a B15. It's like, if you have a connected Ampeg and I talked to you and, um, you know, I just needed something, you know, kind of quick and, um, didn't want to break the bank immediately. Cause I didn't really know what was going to happen with the right. gig. Uh, so I got one of those, yeah, the PF three hundreds. Um, and, uh, and man, I loved it. It was awesome. Real easy. Never had an issue. And then, uh, we upgraded to the 800 for this last year. Yep. Um, again, just man, so consistent, never had an issue at all with it, you know? Um, yeah, that, and I've got a, a 410 that I have on the road with me and I got my 115 here in the house. So cool. Cool. So you, nice. are, you, you are a bona fide Ampeg. Amp, well, you're an Ampeg artist, obviously, but you're, you're a bona fide Ampeg convert. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, man. I mean, you know, uh, it, it, the consistency, it, it's like, you know what you're going to get when you, when you plug one in. I mean, I was that photo that y'all have up was from a gig, um, uh, I did in Alaska and I had like a seventies SVT backlined and man, that thing was killing. And it's just, you know, it's just always fun. I mean, yeah. the most, the coolest times I've had on base has just been like, you know, an SVT or some Ampeg has been involved one way or another, um so yeah i mean there's some old there's some old you know like those old fender basements if you plug a, ba a, a like an old base into one of those those are pretty fun too but yeah. you know those are can be a little finicky but these these ampegs man cool it's easy well glad you're digging it. as long as you don't have to yeah. lift the svts that's that's the whole <laughs> yeah. idea behind venture now is like yeah you know yeah. you, it like if we can get if we can get 95 percent, even 90 percent, which i think we're i think we're between 90 and 100 percent there yeah. but you know fair. my my mantra has always been you you'll never never be able to replace a tube amp i mean never you know modeling yes you get you get really close same thing but yeah it, but again you know it's like i can i can i can break my back lifting an svt to and from the gig and yeah. be a hundred percent there, or I can like thoroughly enjoy my load in and talk with the <laughs> band and not have yeah. to visit my chiropractor by yeah. and get 95% of the way there with a venture rig or a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I mean, I also played, you know, some of the pro series SVTs I've played yeah. and yeah. I love those too, man. Like, you know, it's, it, you know, being a, being a, a new, a newer bassist, just in terms of the tone, like being on the tone quest and all that stuff. It, it's one of those things where, um, you know, you realize in bass, it's all about the subtleties, you know, and, and you need that good, clean sound, that good, clean, direct sound. And everything else is all in your fingers and how the amp reacts to it. Sure. And with an SVT, it's just like, you know, that if you dig in, that's going to, that thing's going to go with you. Uh, and it's not going to, you know, it's not going to sound weird. It's not going to like, right. ha they're not going to have issues with it, you know? So, um, like every SVT I've played, I've just thoroughly loved, you know, whether it's the heritage or the classic or the, the, the four pro or the seven pro or the whatever, you know, or yeah. the SVT setting on the venture, like it, it works. It's, it's there. It gives me the sound that I want. And it, it sort of, it's a good reflection of, um, the bass you play because all the pickups are different. So, you know, sure. it's going to sound different with the jazz bass versus, you know, my 60, 1960 EB3 or EB1 or whatever. And, um, a P bass, you know, so it's cool. It's just a great, that's cool. You know, we, we got to talk, planet. We got to talk about your EB there in a, in a little yeah. bit, you know, the story behind that. But, uh, so give us a little background here. So did you come from a musical family? A line of musicians or were you the black sheep of the family i, I was definitely the first one of the first professional musicians in my family um so uh i definitely came from a household that listened to music all the time uh so i grew up in little rock and my mom um was a uh just an avid music lover um and we would go to shows all the time growing up it was always bb king um, CV wonder, Joni Mitchell, all that stuff playing on the house at the house all the time. I'd go through her record collection, That's which I have now the crusaders, you know, jazz yeah. crusaders, yeah. um, all that old, you know, blues, funk, jazz, that's an R and B Roberta Flack. Those are the things that I, uh, grew up listening to. And, um, and in, 
um, there was a point when I was, I guess it was my 10th birthday, 11th birthday, I saved up money and I really wanted to be a DJ. So I went to the, uh, I went to the music store and I realized all the DJ equipment at the time was a little too expensive. Cause it was that time where like scratching was really big right. in like the late nineties, uh, funk master flex and all those guys. And so I, um, I got a guitar instead and my my dad and I went over budget and my mom got really mad. My mom's a very sweet lady, but she got real mad. And she said, if you're going to spend this money, you're going to learn how to play that thing. So I got with my cousin, who was a drummer, was in a cover band in Little Rock. And the her guitar player was a uh, great guitar player, taught lessons. So I got hooked up with him. And he, it was, you know, a match made in heaven. He's still one of my closest friends to these day, to this day. And he opened my eyes to the world of music, not just guitar, uh, opened my ears to the meters and to yeah. all these other, and Dr. John, all these other uh, artists who I knew a little bit about, but really dug in more and got really into jazz. Um, went to school in New Orleans for jazz guitar, um, was in a band after that, got, you know, was in the music industry in New Orleans, in yeah. the jazz world for a long time. And yeah, I mean, I, I just kind of, you know, kind of paved my own way with it family wise. Right. And my parents were very supportive. I'm a very lucky guy. You, you, you actually have the opposite, like the, the, the backwards story. Like usually it's the kid that goes in looking for a guitar right? or takes up guitar lessons. Ah, screw it. It's too hard. I'm just going to say, yeah. I'll, I'll be a DJ. It's, yeah. it's like you did the whole flip flop. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I loved records, you know, and I still love <laughs> records. And I, uh, one of my favorite artists is uh, out of New Orleans. Her name is DJ Soul Sister. She's one of the best DJs because she just has the best records and knows all the deep cuts. And as a kid, yeah. I would just sit and listen to records all the time in my mom, you know, in my of my mom's record collection. And um, and I got really into it. I got really into music and um, really into you know black American music, um, yeah. every genre of it. And uh, yeah. That's just sort of, you know, and I wanted to place, I realized that I wanted to play something that, uh, you know, I wanted to basically emulate BB King when I was, you know, 10 or 11. So got a guitar and I just tried to learn the one note and the trill thing. Yep, and yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, all that, that was all it was. It was all BB King. That's where it all kind of started Man. from. That's, you know, and I've, 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 and Dom's heard me say this a million times too. And it, and it's true with like everybody we've had on this show, it's, like we as musicians seem to learn more from non-musicians like our parents or our yeah. older siblings or, you know, our best bud, like, Hey, check out this new, you know, this, whatever, you know, the, the new roots album. We, and I've, I grew up with the same buddy. He's got like half a million records in his record and CD collection. And he can tell you, who played on what blue note album, what year it was, who the band leader and, and this guy like doesn't know how to play a note, but he knows more about music yeah. than most musicians do. You know, the just so it again, you come from that school of growing up in a musical household and being brought up by your parents. That yeah. You know. And and living in New Orleans and going to school in New Orleans, it was really um, you know, what's great about New Orleans is that they won't let you forget the history of all of this stuff right um and they um you know they they force you to know who played on what record when that record what year that record right. came out the track listing all these different things um and so you know that was that was a big part of it too and i love that kind of stuff i mean i got a book at, from barnes and noble and barnes and noble was a big thing back in the the 90s and early 2000s um, it's a book of, it's like this jazz compendium. It's maybe this thick and the pages are really thin and it's every art it's sorted by artists wow. and it's their record. The, wow. every artist who play, every musician who played on the record, um, what year it came out, who produced it, all this stuff. Oh, wow. And so I studied that like crazy, bought every, all the seed, I spent all of my money that I earned on chores and from work on CDs and yeah. just read liner notes and, and just, took all of it in and yeah. then once i was able to get to the point fluently on guitar where i could learn the solos and learn the music i was i was doing that too you know um and not just with jazz i mean my first semester in college um you know i tell younger uh players 
the way to develop your time and feel because that's the most important thing that you have as a musician i think especially a rhythm uh, rhythm section player um i sat in a practice room every single day and i learned every single guitar part to every james brown song that i had uh on my computer learned as much of the bootsy bass lines as i could nice. learned all the horn yeah. parts i mean that is where it's at you know yeah so that that's and it, knowing if it you know who was playing bass who was playing guitar who uh, all the different guys had different styles so that's really important and it, yeah. that's sort of how i cut my teeth and not know, just got to the point where I was and not just learning, like you said, not just learning one part, like you're, if, you know, as a bass player, we learn the bass parts, but right. you know, if you learn the horn parts that develops your theory off of, you know, what the bass line is. But what really happens is when somebody in the band doesn't know their part and you turn around and go, no, your part is this. <laughs> yeah, and like, exactly. Wait, how does the bass player know my part? Well, because yeah. the bass player is a musician, just like the rest of us. Absolutely. <laughs> and, if, you know, bass player is the most foundational. I mean, it. that's one thing that I learned the kind of not the hard way, but like really quickly, I learned like, you know, the bass player, it's you don't notice him until he messes up or he plays something that's otherworldly, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, but it's it's a great. Um, it, yeah. And it's also, too, you know, just having the, you know, learning how to play like those guys. Yeah. You know, it's impossible, yeah. but it's the closer you can get to it and transit translating different instruments on your own makes you a better player, you know, yeah. like learning a Boots Collins baseline on guitar or like a Donald Duck Dunn baseline on guitar, you know, those things get your time and feel just to that next level. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's the dragon that I'm chasing is how do I feel and sound like those guys you well, know, still to this day. And, you know, I got to say, it's like listening to Noah's music too. When you're like, I got to ask you what, what's your approach coming up with a baseline? Because I mean, Noah, as, as simple as his music is, it's pretty complex too. And it's not like you can't just sit back there and just thump on a quarter note. You, you yeah. Yeah. How do you approach that, that? that? That's a good question. So the the producer uh, of his records plays bass on him, and he is a bassist. And so really, he kind of gives me um, when I talk to him about what he does, he kind of tells me, okay, here are the little things that I need you to play because he's also mm -hmm. the musical director for the band. Mm -hmm. Here are the little spots that you need to have. These are sort of your guide points. Okay. And then you know he kind of just lets me do and Noah sort of gives me the freedom because they trust me. Um, I, I kind of have this, I, this thing of, um, you know, and you guys get it, the bass player, you know, the bass player is what kind of makes people move and dance in the band. And when you're in a live setting and a song has a little bit more energy to it, you need to take that line, unless it's already there, take that line a little bit further, you know, rhythmically and kind of give a bit of a pulse to let the people kind of move to, yeah. um, bring some live elements to it. And so, you know, keeping it simple and focusing more on, you know, rhythmic qualities of it. Um, I definitely have, and it's also too, just kind of like evolving it over time. I mean, when I first started playing with him, playing bass, uh, on this last tour that started in October of last year, uh, that what I was playing on bass is a lot different than what I'm playing now. Okay. Um, because I've gotten more comfortable with it and mm -hmm. I'm trying new stuff and, you know, learning more on the bass. And so I joke that I'm trying to bring the funk to folk, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the funk to folk. It, yeah. Cause you, you have these, you, you have these, you know, the reason that I think the live show is so good is because Noah's energy is, is so much in more intense than it is on the record. You know, Yes. for a live setting and um and he's really going for it so i have to match that yeah. if i'm just kind of playing the really you know the beautiful stuff that's on the record it it only translates so far so you know for a live show you really got to bring that you know that thump that energy um and i i just approach it like okay here's the beginning of it what can i do how can i work with the drummer uh, marcos Fiez to you know, lock in and find these subtle little, you know, things sort of like, 
one of my favorite um uh, they're speaking <laughs> the devil uh uh subtle little things like I, it was funny i was talking to marcus about this too the other day I've been learning, I've been trying to learn a lot of more uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire bass lines. And one of my favorite things about Verdine White is that every once in a while, he'll just be doing his thing. And then you just hear this random just boop, yep. just in there that kind of moves your body. You have like a visceral reaction to it. Yeah. And that's what I try to, that's what I want to, you know, try to accomplish Man. with it, you know. <laughs> and uh, you guys, I got to say, and you guys, you know, when I saw you at Bank of New Hampshire Pavilion up in Guilford, um, you know, it's a good tie stage. And you guys yeah. aren't like, you're not just standing in one spot the whole night. You guys are jumping <laughs> around. And I, 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 for anybody that wants, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, but uh, just this last Saturday, they were on the Saturday Night Live show. And, and I got to say, like, you guys are jumping around, but you're not, it, it's not, you're not jumping around for the sake of showmanship. You're jumping around because you just, it looks like you guys are just genuinely having a blast. Oh, man. On stage. Like, if you're not having fun, other. what are you doing? Right. Thank like, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I get, I, I'm in a, a category, like, I am so lucky to be in the position that I am. You know, 1% of 1% of 1% of, of players get to experience this. And, you know, I, if you're not having fun, then don't do it. That's sort of how I, how I try yeah. to approach it. You know, I chose to be a musician professionally and forego other, you know, things that could have made me money and, you know, yeah. whatever, because I wanted to do something that I love and have fun. And, yeah. you know, you get one chance at it and, you know, like if I'm not having fun then I'm not going to do it. So yeah, like it, it's, it, it, you know, and it's, it, you try to make it infectious. You know, the guys in the band are so fun. We have fun yeah. with each other. We're having a good time. There's no reason to, you know, take it too seriously. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you got, you, you know, make sure you got your parts and you nail it, but have fun. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. You, you know, didn't, you didn't <laughs> yeah. get into this business to make money. You mean? Yeah. Right. Well, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he was stuck with DJing if you want to make money. Yeah, oh, exactly. Dude. Yeah. I'm still trying. I'm still trying to get my fun master flex, you know, scratching. <laughs> and, you know. Yeah. That's, Man. that's funny. Now, Sid, so since you started on bass now, did you, did you have any like premonitions of play, being a bass player or playing bass prior to, joining up with Noah or were you primarily like focused on guitar? Guitar has been my yeah. love, my first love um, since I picked up the instrument. I mean, you know, like, like I said, BB King before I even played music was my biggest, one of my biggest inspirations, my biggest hero, um, you know, his story, what, how he communicates music is a language and the way he communicates, I think is better than, you know, most musicians ever, you know, being able to just play one note and say a million things with that one note. Yeah. Um, I guitar was my, you know, was my thing. Um, but I always loved bass. Um, my favorite, you know, in when you're learning jazz and when you're comping, especially when you're with a singer, uh, it's just you and a singer or you're, you know, you, I loved learning walking bass on the guitar. Mm -hmm. You know, it teaches you, you know, chord movement and that kind of thing. So I've always enjoyed bass and I would pick it up every once in a while, but um, it was really COVID. Uh, I um, had it my, I start, I, you know, did an EP, had my own project um, that I did as a way to, you know, kind of deal with the grief of losing my father in 2016. And because I couldn't really hire guys to, because I wanted to perform it live in a studio, I couldn't really hire anybody over COVID. So I just learned bass. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend, Tim Rocco, who's a great uh, luthier, built a bass, a P bass, and I borrowed it from him, eventually bought it from him and learned on a P bass. And, um, you know, and once I started learning that, I realized with Noah's music, oh, wow, this music definitely needs more bass guitar than second guitar on a lot of these songs. Because right. what we were doing at the time was a four piece where we had our keyboard player play bass with his left hand. Mm. Um, and I was like, let me let me learn a lot of Noah's music on bass and then let's figure this out. And so moving past that 2021 tour uh, into the next year, I realized, you know, this is going to be a, and hearing his stick season record, 
I realized, you know, it's probably going to benefit us long term and benefit me long term if I, you know, focus on bass full time and we find a great guitarist to just come in and do what they can do. Um, because, you know, in a way, guitarists are dime a dozen and a lot of the bassists that I knew in town, the great bassists are had gigs and they were busy and yeah. um, bassists are kind of not as uh, hard to are not as easy to get um, yeah. ones that know how to tour and can gel with the band and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I, I just went, I just said, you know what, I'm going to take this opportunity to see if I can do something for me that could, you know, get me the success that I've always wanted um, as a professional musician. And I'm going to go into it hundred percent in and learn as much as I can. And man, it's been so much fun, you yeah. know, you, you're 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 breaking the bass player molds, musicians <laughs> molds. All so not only did you go in thinking you were going to be a DJ, you walk out with a guitar. You you actually kicked the keyboard player out of his left hand gig. And yeah. Said, yes. Yeah. Well, he was happy about that. I mean, unfortunately for you know he he but our Sorry. keyboard player Dylan, he's so talented. He went from playing keyboards most of the time, and he had he played banjo on two songs <laughs> okay. on SNL. You know, he and yeah. I normally jo we oh, joke. It's like. Oh. <laughs> you know, he was the banjo. He's the banjo player in the band. And we joke, you know, when when the uh, tour came out for next year, you know, we're doing two nights at Madison Square Garden and two nights at yeah. Fenway. Yeah. We were joking like, hey, man, did you ever think that you were going to play like your biggest moment of your career would be on banjo? Because I didn't think mine would be on bass, you know. Yeah, right. And, but we joke like my like being on bass is a lot cooler than being on banjo. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it, and, and I, I no disrespect to any keyboard players that are playing no, keyboard of course not. bass, but it's, you know, the running joke is like, oh, you know, I, I got a left hand that can do that. But hey, yeah. you know, it, Joey DeFrancesco is, you know, that's right? the guy. Right. You know, it's like I, I learned like Lonnie Smith. I mean, I learned a lot of those le those lines, too, I, on guitar. Their of left hand, of course. you know, yeah. it's yeah. their their bass players too. bass players at heart for sure. It's it's funny you say that, though, because we were doing a um, we were playing a festival this past summer. And um, this uh, we call him an auxiliary player. He's a lap steel guitar, keyboard, fiddle yeah. player. And you know, his name's Leo and I, he's probably not watching, but Leo, God bless you, man. It, so we're, we're loading into the gig and I'm in my Dodge Ram and, you know, we're all like driving minivans and pickup trucks and, and Leo pulls in in a Porsche, the, the four door SUV, Panamera, oh, wow. or whatever right. it was, you know, it, and it's Kinda, like, yeah, nice. yeah. yeah uh, you know, and I know he bought it used and what, but it's, the joke was <laughs> when he pulled in, like the guitar player goes, Check out Leo in the Porsche. Is, yeah, he's the fiddle player. What do you expect? You know, it's like <laughs> fiddle players get paid more, don't they? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Now, you know, yeah. That was, that was I always, I always tell like people who come up to me, they're like, you know, my kid really is thinking about getting into music. And I say, like, you know, you if you if you're gonna let them do it, like let them choose whatever instrument they want. But if they want to really go into it, you should have them double on either bass. Yep. Mm -hmm. or oboe because <laughs> yeah. with bass players it's like you can always find a gig everyone's looking for a bass player yep. oboe it's like who who do you know that plays oboe and that you know you can always find a gig at a symphony being yeah. the oboist because that's you know the first oboe chair is the head of the <laughs> head of the orchestra and they're usually you know hard to find and they can make some money doing it you know exactly Mark. <laughs> <laughs> either that or you know keyboard player and saxophone player yeah there that's, yeah that's saxophone fiddle i mean yeah you know we're yeah. we're uh gonna we're probably bringing in a, another you know member of the band next year to bring it to do fiddle and a lot of that stuff too so it, it's nice. yeah i mean just being able to double on a lot of different instruments is super duper important yeah. you know yeah that's so funny now when you i gotta ask you when you moved to nashville did you already have a gig lined up or was it kind of like a blind faith thing? I just, I got to go with, with a music is happening sort of thing. Um, so I was in a band out of my, out of college. Uh, my best friend and I, we, it was basically like grad school for us. We started this band, we wrote the music together. We booked all the shows. We managed the band, did everything. And we um, had somebody uh, produce us from Nashville um and he had done some cool work um in like the bluegrass world and the country world but great producer on pretty much everything and he um he told me um after we did this record we had gone to nashville a few times and i had really liked it liked the vibe there um met some great people 
um, but didn't have a gig or anything. And he told me, you know, it's tough, but you can make it. If you come up here, you're good enough to do it. So um, New Orleans really, it's not, it's a place where like, if you find a gig, you keep a gig. Yeah. Um, and so there weren't a lot of gigs to be had. So I needed a place with ladders up and out, um, ladders of opportunity. So I moved to Nashville just sort of with, you know, what I had saved up and put everything in my car. My dad helped me moved into a, an apartment um, in, you know, across the street from the projects and uh, in South Nashville, which is now like gentrified like crazy. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, just moved on. You just moved on, you know, faith in my ability to, you know, network and just do it. Um, I had a couple of people who knew me from New Orleans and got me connected with this artist, Benji Davis, who is a killer writer now um, at Big Machine. And uh, I was, I, within the first few months of living here, I got an opportunity to play in his band. Um, and that led sort of to me working in the country world for a little bit, uh, for a publishing company doing their demos, but really getting here, it was just, yeah, blind faith, just knowing that, you know, just believing in myself and, um, knowing that I, you know, believing that I could do it, you know, yeah. it's just sort of what it is. Did you work Broadway at all while you were there too? Oh yeah, as a, as so, a guitar player. Yeah, as a guitar player. So my my first real gig in Nashville. Oh my god, it just brings back some <laughs> memories. So so the the Broadway the way Broadway works is that it's four hour shifts, no yeah. break. Um, like you can't. There's no. You go straight four hours. Maybe you could take a quick pee break or something while the the rest of the band's playing a song. Um. I played, and the best times really to do it are the 10 a, the 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. slots yeah. on the weekends. Um, so my gigs were on at this place called Legends, a pretty famous bar on Broadway. I had the 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. set oh. on Mondays and Thursdays. So, oh. <laughs> good, so it's a good learning set at least oh you know? man you tell and and so and i went up there one i love country music i wanted to play you know uh i wanted to play george jones and merle haggard and all that old like willie nelson and all that old great stuff um and i get in there and i'm playing like jason aldean and and like, you know, uh, some of this newer stuff, bro country. And I was yep. like, God, that's terrible. I didn't sing at the time. So it was me and a guy and his sister. And they, you know, really didn't play that well. They had okay voices. And they were young, though. Um, and so I had to learn, you know, I was like, I'm gonna if I'm going to do this and no one's going to be here, I'm just going to learn how to sing right. and bring my own songs. And so I brought in Vince Gill songs and uh and george jones and merle haggard all johnny cash all that stuff and i just had to sing myself and you know the most i made on a four-hour set was four uh was ninety dollars and uh you know after paying for parking and getting groceries yeah. and getting gas getting home with 15 bucks yeah. i mean it was brutal so i did that for maybe six eight months did some more stuff on broadway randomly would pick up gigs you'd meet people and uh and eventually um after about a year of doing it year and a half i was like i'm done with this <laughs> i i thankfully got into the r&b scene and the gospel scene in town met some incredible musicians right. who are still some of my best friends to this day and i started playing off broadway uh this area called printer's alley oh yeah um had a gig you know with these great singers playing like r&b and funk and pop right. and stuff so that was that's more kind of my speed that, anyway that's that. where all the non-country stuff happens in nashville for anybody yeah we play at this play we play this place where they won't let you play country yeah you know yeah. so yeah it was awesome yeah it's uh you know, no, I, no hate to the guys on Broadway no. though. Those guys are hustling and they're doing their oh, yeah. thing, but it's a grind that and I then, am not cut out for. You, you know, my my dear friend, uh, God rest his soul, uh, Sean Scruggs, mm -hmm. um, played Broadway most of his professional life. And I remember, you know, every time I'd be in Nashville, he was like the king of Broadway. You'd walk mm -hmm. up and down Broadway. You never paid for a drink in any of the rooms, or yeah. But I remember asking, I was like, "Can you can you really make a living?" And he goes, "Dude," he, and he, I won't say. But it was, it was into the six figures. Oh that, yeah, that he did. Sure. But he was like, I was pulling shifts. People would call me like twenty minutes before they couldn't do that. Like he says, I was pulling shifts seven days a week, multiple shifts per day. 
to the point yeah. he almost he almost like he well he did burn himself out on it but you can't yeah. make a living but you work your ass off you work real hard and it's it's you know it can get a little toxic sometimes and yeah. like you're dealing with people who are drunk all the time screaming <laughs> things at you and it's just it's it, it it can just get to a point where it's not real healthy you know the one place that i do love still is robert's western world because they're playing yeah. the killer old stuff and yep. um you know i i just i love that place and that was where i wanted to end up going but you know at a certain point i realized you know i'm a i like country music but i'm not gonna country isn't gonna be the thing for me yeah. i'm more of a blues r b kind of guy um i love like music that's a little more grooving and that kind of stuff um and you know folk music i really love too you know the country stuff it's it, it 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 can get um especially the more modern stuff it can just get a little showy you know yeah. i'm not yeah. really it, it it's great but it's just you know it's sort of teach their own kind of situation yeah no ab absolutely ab absolutely how did you um I'm doing all the talking, Tom. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, just laughing. I don't no, want to interrupt, uh, man. <laughs> no, it, well, it's again. I I I joke about this all the time. Like this is these episodes are the conversations that we always want to have at Nam, but you can yeah. never have them at Nam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're always but, like, yeah. But you can't with your plugs in. Like I'm going to tell you to, yeah, just take, yeah. bring it, bring it down yeah, just a you know, little, <laughs> yeah, just give me one second, or or you yeah. get the guy that's dead, you know, right up, <laughs> like. I'll be with you once. <laughs> By the way, uh, are you? I, well, no, you're going to be busy. You're not. You won't be at Nam this January, will you? No, unfortunately, it's, I don't think so. So I was. Um, oh, so yeah, January. we're going to. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, when is it's end of January? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'll be in Australia. Oh no. Oh bummer. <laughs> not, you need a the flight's going to be long, but it'll be awesome. I'll yeah, be able yeah. to escape the cold for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's right too so your schedule like you i mean you guys were just killing it this year in terms of yeah it was gone 211 days no Dude, way or with wow. snl probably 215 yeah wow and and next year i mean you're probably kicking off next same. year in australia and kind of working your way all around till back into the states so. yeah we have a, we're playing a festival in mexico in the beginning of january then we come home for like two days fly to Australia for like two, three weeks, come home. Uh, and then we have a week and then we go to Europe and we come back from Europe and we have maybe uh, a few weeks to rehearse. And then we go up to Canada to do a big Canadian tour. And then we come home for a few weeks and then we start this American run for a few months. Awesome. Um, and wow. yeah, and it's looking like we're going to be gone from January through maybe September. So it'll be kind of the same you know, and yeah. by at end of that, I told Noah, you know, because we've been working so hard for seven years, I was like, man, listen, like at the end of next year is the end of the grind. It's like, you yeah. know, we're going to be, yeah. we, we won't have to do this yeah. like this unless we want to, yep. unless yeah. you want yep. to, yeah. you know, and that's um, just you've that, that the world just, at that point. Yeah. Is that not yeah. uh, like Nashville touring schedule? Is that like pretty nonstop? It's uh say that one more time. Is it what? Like is it like a you know Wednesday through Sunday situation? Oh no 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 no. no. Yeah, it's You're not like, like a, it's not like a country thing. Even though I do love touring like that, it's pretty nice. Yeah. But it's we're out, so we'll yeah. be gone. You know, weeks at a time. Um, yeah. So we'll you know it's it's more. Thankfully, this time around, we'll have a lot of like two shows in the same place, and the um and like you know we'll be able to have day, a lot of days off in between don't have a lot of three in a row type shows, but um, yeah, it's a good, it, it's a good this year, next year, it's going to be a little bit easier in certain respects um, because this year was a lot of, you know, crazy travel and three in a rows and a lot of different, um, you know, a lot, just a lot. <laughs> that, yeah, that's yeah, just the easy yeah. way to say it. That's a lot. That is a lot. I got to ask, uh, Josh, any relation to Noah? Oh yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's Noah's dad. What's up, Josh? <laughs> Go Braves! Go it's Braves! Like, it's like a family. Affair, he always gives me a hard time. He's a big Red Sox guy. Oh, so he always gives me a hard time with the Braves. Well, that's right. That's even though, like, even though the Braves are the original team from Boston, I give him well, a hard time. Oh yeah, you can't argue that. But that's true. They're they're uh, Noah was born and raised in New England in Vermont, correct? He was. 
was, yeah. Uh, Hanover, New Hampshire and Vermont. He was born in Vermont, lived in New Hanover for a little bit, moved back to, um, moved back to New Hampshire That's or right. uh, moved back to Vermont, um, uh, in high school. Yeah. He's the king of the upper Valley, man. He's, so, he, I, I he's just, no flatlander as they say no, up there. Well, I was just going to say, Josh, you, you and I will meet at a Red Sox game at some point and, and, have yeah. and, and we'll match every when, when they're winning again, but that's another, I love Josh. He's a story. great, great guy. <laughs> he has more, he has more ways to use duct tape than I've ever seen anybody. <laughs> this guy is um, the man. If the world ends, go to Josh Khan's house. He <laughs> will take care of you. He's got all, he's got it all figured out, man. I love that guy to death. He's a great that's dude. Amazing. Duct tape and WD 40, man. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Uh, Speaking of hey, comments, look, somebody said that they liked the sleeping cat, and I was just laughing internally. That's my dog. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, who looks very much like a cat, so I get it. Oh, I, I thought it said I like the sleeping cot. I'm looking in the back. I was like, shoot, did I leave my did I not make my bed this morning? Because sometimes I do sleep down here in the studio. That's funny. He's um, fierce dog growling in the background. Don't be, don't be full. Um Alex, do you have like a day off uh or even like d- days of shows? Like, do you have a routine the, the morning before or the day day leading up to the show? Uh, it really just kind of depends on where we are and what it is like, um, you know, on certain days, like in the summer, a lot of times, um, you know, Noah and I would like, we will try to like get our, get away. And cause it, the issue, the issue with a lot of these bigger venues and the level that we're at is that we don't really have to do anything until sound check. So you can kind of get into a really bad routine of just laying around all day and not getting yeah. out. And yeah. so we'll go, you know, play golf sometimes. We'll um, play basketball. We'll try to get out and get a little bit of activity in. Um, if we're in an area that's, you know, in, in like a downtown or metro area, uh, we'll get out and walk around and just kind of do our thing. Um, you know, on days off, definitely trying to, if we're in a city with baseball, I'm definitely trying to catch a baseball game um, or any type of sporting event um definitely trying to you know go to a good restaurant that sort of thing i'm a big food guy so uh yeah so that sort of if i and especially if i'm no if i'm a city that i know well i mean i definitely have it all planned out you know so um, you know where you're gonna eat before you even get there (laughs) sometimes and and uh, thankfully we we our crew is full of foodies and people who love experiences so we definitely have a good time uh doing that that too break the tour for sure Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. yeah, we have a great crew. It is a great group of people. It is like we have so much fun together. And I think that's what also has led to a lot of the success is that we just have so much fun together yeah. and it takes off so much pressure, yeah. you know, when you're having fun and not having to worry about any sort of, excuse me, internal politics. It's just, it makes yeah. it so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I will say I, I had the chance to hang with, with, uh, with Alex and Noah uh, this past summer at Bank of New Hampshire Pavilion. And and I, I'll say it again. I'm not going to post the picture because I'm not going to embarrass my daughter. But um, you, you you literally made me dad of the year by, <laughs> by, by getting us backstage. And, and she th- that's all her and her friend talked about. All awesome. the way home. There so, you go. That's good. But hey, just anytime, the- man. I, look, I, tr- I know what it's like, you know, with... Uh, when you know i have because i have a lot of friends in the same way they're like i man honestly i don't i never really heard of you guys but my wife or my daughter or my sister they i told them who you play for and they freak out i'm like yeah man you know you're my buddy come on by like let's have let's hang out let's have a good time let's say what's up you know and uh and i mean obviously for you i mean you you saved you saved my butt so many times with the um amp stuff and you guys have been so supportive it's like that's honestly the least i could do is to get you in man no, seriously thank you well that's that, i mean that you know i gotta say that's the thing and and people have mentioned this before too you know first and foremost dom and i are players you know we're yeah. we're, we're touring guys whenever we can but we play and you know what it comes down to when you're on stage and you push the on button and it doesn't come on and our stuff does that just like everyone else's you know or, yeah. or just, never never yeah <laughs> but you know, but, but that's the thing like we understand the value of like no nah, the show's got to go on man like we gotta you need an amp i gotta we gotta do this you know we gotta take yeah care of it, you know, so. well and i really appreciated it too given like 
you know, I'm sure coming out of COVID, like the supply chain stuff was probably a really big issue for you guys. And like, and you guys also have like really, and you know, before we blew up, you know, we were kind of, you know, just sort of a mid-level act and, you know, you have some great big artists, great players on your roster and for you guys to, you know, go out of your way to help, you know, a guy who just started playing the instrument with a, you know, a mid-level <laughs> band who had some steam behind them, you know, and even, even if we didn't, y'all would have helped out. Like it, yeah. that was a huge, yeah. a huge help. And cause you know, I, I try to tell guys too, like, you know, even when you're playing for somebody massive, you know, you can't, or even like not, if you're just a guy that maybe yeah. has some followers, you can't expect, you can't expect anything. You can't expect anybody to hook you up with anything for free because it's all a business and they got to make money and, and, and just, you know, so all you can really ask for is to have a good relationship, yeah. personal yeah. relationship with somebody and for them to appreciate what you're doing, um, in your, in, you know, have yeah. that sort of mutual respect. And, uh, and, you know, so that's sort of what I always you know, ask for is just like, is there any way that you guys could just, you know, artist pricing or whatever. Yeah. And you guys have just been unbelievable with that, that, you know, and that, you know, and that's, that is the relationship in artist relations. And that's, you know, that's why since day one, we've always gotten along. You understand, you know, you understand where I'm coming from and vice versa. And yeah. It's just, you know, it, it, it is, it is all about relations. It, it, it truly is, man. You know, and it's, yeah. it's funny you say that because I, I, I do remember like when, when you first reached out and Brian introduced us and, uh, you know, I'm looking at your, at, uh, at your socials, you know, obviously yeah. that, that's what, that's what artist relations geeks do. Let's check out his socials. Yeah. Sure, and I see sure. all these guitar posts. It's like, yeah, <laughs> this, this dude's not even a bass player, but I know, I know it's, it, it, it's funny, man. Like, like I, I love, I mean, even before I was, you know, a bass player, I loved playing bass, but it was that's always what? sort of like in a studio session, you know, and no photos. That's, um, any, yeah. Uh, anytime I, and I, I am prejudgmental because I can't play guitar to save my life. Like I, <laughs> I can play a D chord, a G chord, a couple of bar chords. It's too frustrating, get, man. It's, yeah, it's too many strings. It's too much. Yeah, a lot of, um, like little strings, you know, but it's whenever I see a bass player proficient at guitar, I always like, ah, oh, maybe he's not a real bass player. Maybe he's a guitar player <laughs> that converted over guitar. I e Paul McCartney. Yeah, you know, right, right. Like, right. <laughs> like you, say, you can always tell by the the the, fill, the fills. I feel like. Uh, oh yeah. Bass- it's primarily a guitarist that always gives it away. I, I always <laughs> joke with my my bass player friends. It's like you know that I'm not a bassist because of my right hand, because I'm I'm playing like I'm playing like guitar finger style. You know, I don't really have the you know the the one two back and forth. Man, it's like it's like all it's basically all upstrokes or all thumb and yeah. you know. But hey, some of the best Dude, bass players in the world and the history had weird. You know, even yeah. guitar players too have Absolutely. weird te- techniques. So Absolutely. you know, if it works for Jamerson, it works. You know, it can work for anybody, right? Yeah, yeah man. No, it's it, it's it's funny. Like a you know, if if you played a, if you played one gig and you played a root and a fifth on that gig, you're a bass player. Absolutely. <laughs> Everything after that is you know is is. Uh, you know, extra, I guess, if you say, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. But speaking uh, of bass, is, is the Gibson your main go-to on this tour? No, actually it's not. This is the only one that I have at home. So, uh, okay. so basically when I started, uh, when I, when I was like, okay, I'm going to be the basis for no con. Um, I had a, uh, a P bass that was, uh, given to me by Tim Rocco of Rocco guitars. And, um, and I played that and I liked it, but it was a, you know, big, I mean, it's a grown man's bass, big neck, long, it's four string, but it, it almost felt like a five string neck. Um, and I would go, I would just kind of go to different shops and play basses. And I realized that I really liked uh, the short scale stuff. So yeah. um, went to a place in Nashville, Carter Vintage, and I yeah. played an EB0 um from the 60s and i was like man this neck is incredible and it like has a cool sound so um you know that one that i played was a little too pricey for me so i just kind of went on um reverb and i got this i got it for a good deal and the guy accepted my offer immediately which was a little sus and i get (laughs) it in the mail and the neck pocket was just completely caved in the guy had taken gorilla glue to put it back in i mean it was a mess so my buddy Tim basically just redid this for me. 
Um, it still needs a little bit of work, new bridge and all that stuff. But this is sort of the one I leave at home if I ever need a base at home. But um, currently I am playing, uh, it's all pretty much all short scales. Uh, I have a a Mustang um, that I, it was, I bought a JMJ Mustang that I sent to Tim Rocco recently that he converted into a P base. Cause I'll just, cool. I just like playing P bases. Um, and I played that on SNL, the black Mustang. Okay. Um, and he put a great new neck on it. And then I, um, I have a great relationship with guild. Um, and they have been incredibly supportive too. shout out to guild. Uh, and Caleb over at Guild, they gave me um, that Starfire short scale that I use. Oh, yeah, you got one. Man, yeah. I love Third that thing. thing. Yeah, you know, Star Starfire with flats, man. That's a vibe for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, and then guitar, I'm a 335 guy. That's like my thing. So having like a, a semi hollow, you know, yeah. looking like a 335, that's that's the move. I mean, if Gibson, you know, if Gibson's got any old EB2s lying around, like I would definitely <laughs> would take one. But uh, but um, and then Fender gifted me um, one of their Mustang J combos because okay. I wanted oh, yeah. to I wanted I like the Mustang, but the pickup is a little too woofy for some of Noah's stuff. Um, and that J pickup really kind of adds a little high into it. Yeah. Um, so I've got that. And then I just started working with a really good friend of mine, Chopper Anderson, who oh, yeah. uh, owns alien audio yeah. okay. and man, his bases are top of the top. And he's building me a short scale double P that oh, cool. I am very, very excited about. Very cool. um, Chopper's been a good friend of mine forever. And he, uh, you know, he would come to my shows when I was playing out in uh, Leapers Fork, Tennessee with a good friend of mine, Casey Wozner, great artist. And he would always call me like mini Larry Carlton. And so he was just been the sweetest guy. And when he heard I was playing bass, he just immediately hit me up and was like, I got to get you one of my basses. I was like, easy. Yeah. yeah make right? Amazing basses. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I was with him the other day. And so, you know, everyone that I work with is just so supportive uh and then uh, on the board stuff i use um i have a noble i got a noble preamp that i basically run the clean sound out of and then um another one of the companies that i have a great relationship with uh is source audio um mm -hmm. they they were one of the first they uh them and rocco guitars were one of the first companies to really just you know i could i developed a great relationship with them and so i have uh one of their eq i have their eq pedal and i have their bass distortion pedal which i absolutely love the aftershock uh on that um i've got a leela uh volume pedal pedal and um and um love their stuff too um and i use a jhs uh color box for okay. another level of uh, gain okay. staging and stuff um, and then I got that compressor, the Ampeg compressor that I use as well. That that helps sort of even out the the volume of each bass, you know, because um, yeah. all the basses have different levels. But yeah, that's sort of the rig. And then, um, uh, yeah, then the then of course all the Ampeg stuff, you know. There you go. Yeah, I mean that. It's funny. Uh, I just want to point out for anybody that's that's watching here. I, and I don't know if you were aware of this or not, Alex, but. Gibbs, uh, Gibson, Guild and Ampeg now are sister companies. Oh, they are. Yeah. So yeah. Yamaha Guitar Group is is Ampeg Line Six, Yamaha Guitars, Guild, Cordova. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So Caleb, I've been actually I've had a couple of artists that have reached out to me saying, "Who do I talk to about a Starfire?" But yeah. that's you. you yeah. See again, you did it the opposite way. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. Well, That's you funny. know, I thought about, uh, you know, I, I, I'd never played Yamaha basses before, uh, only until recently, cause I never really had the chance to like go find, you know, there weren't a whole lot of spots that had them in Nashville, but I played one the other day, like the broad, one of the broad basses. And I really like yeah. that. I mean, and you guys have some killer, you know, they have some killer artists with Yamaha too. So, I mean, it's great that Gil, I mean, they're making some great stuff. They also sent me an acoustic. I guess they're bringing a lot of their um, manufacturing back to the States they are, and yeah. they are making some yeah. high quality stuff. So yeah, yeah. awesome. That's great. It yeah. makes sense that y'all are sister companies because yeah. you know, it, it's, it's in the, it's in the bloodline. Yeah, when we when that when that, when that all went down, that's Dom and I. Dom and I were on a conference call together. We we're like, stop yeah. fires for both. Yeah, of already course, started Dom, scheming. Dom, 
Dom, Dom got a Starfire, and I'm still waiting on mine. Uh, okay. I always remind him. That, yep. that, that's a company. Caleb, thing. hook my man funny. up with a yeah. Starfire, man. <laughs> he can hang it on the wall. He can hang it on the wall behind it, too. I can get this thing down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, oh, man. But, yeah, I don't know, man. I just consider myself a very lucky guy to be able to work with these companies that are so supportive you know and i know it's you know it's a it's it, it works for them just as much as it works for me yeah but um you know a lot of there are some companies that you know just kind of don't really you know respond yeah. or don't do yeah. it the right way and um i'm just you know it's it, it's great to work with these you know great companies man it's awesome yeah. and also uh, to shout out you know uh, there's a, a guy don uh category five amps um he got our guitar player hooked up with an amp uh you know for him and he was i was talking to him about like he was he like would you want an amp and i was like well i i have a thing with ampeg but you know if you i played a an old blonde basement the other day at a store and i loved it and so he made me this like crazy blonde basement clone mm -hmm. that i feel like i'm just going to use as a uh as like a as like a pedal you know it's amazing yeah. it's like you know, it's Absolutely. like a blonde basement for bass instead of guitar, yeah. you know? So, yeah. so shout out to category five amps too. They're, they're really great guys. Yeah. Great company. You, you know, and that, that's, that's, that's one thing that I want to point out real quick too. It's like, you know, all, all of our artists, all of our artists, I'm trying to hide my boss and accent. Sorry. All of our, all of our artists, um, there you, go. you know, we're, 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 we're all, um, we're all workers, you know what I mean? And some, mm -hmm. sometimes you need a special, a different tool to do the same job. So, yeah. you know, if I see, if I see one of our guys or gals, you know, it's like, Hey, that's not an Ampeg amp. Like, and not that I really noticed it, but one thing I did notice on SNL, you guys were on a clean stage and I got to say, that's, that is the best I've ever heard a live band sound on that SNL stage because you, you are the only person to say that, which is cool. You know, yeah. I, 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 I like, I don't know. They're killing it, man. I mean, yeah. they've been doing it forever, so they know what they're doing, but yeah, I, and normally I have, I have a mix of my post and pre in, but I just had the pre in with the noble and it was clean and it was, man, it sounded great in my ears too. I, Dude, even just listening to you on my little, on my computer speakers here, like I was watching your, the, uh, the Instagram yeah. post, I heard all your runs and everything. And I know traditionally from growing up watching SNL back in the old days, when, you know, they, the whole band back line, like everything was on stage, every band that you like, you would stay up purposely to watch this band on SNL yeah. perform live. Cause you know, it's, it's it is a live perform and you go, they sounded absolutely freaking horrible and traditionally <laughs> traditionally it was just it was a very difficult stage to get a live sound on yeah. right only so, the house band sounds good on snl okay. yeah. Well, yeah. That, that, there could i think be james genus has something to say like has, has a re there's a reason for that his name is james genus <laughs> yeah but yeah. you know yeah. who i got to meet and it's just like man Tweet was an incredible guy, right? person oh my god that was a, a highlight of my life to meet and talk to that guy he what a was gig. just so sweet. Oh, what a gig man, that yeah. is, you know. That dude's uh, got the best, all the best gigs. Him, yeah. SNL, Herbie. I mean, just all of it, yeah. you know. Yep, yep. But yeah, I just when I, um, and, and that was the first thing. Like, like I said, when you guys saw playing, I was like, wow. Like, obviously, the performance goes without saying, but the sound, like the yeah. way everything was mixed, sounded really. And then I noticed, I was like, oh no wonder why there's no amps on stage. <laughs> like, you know, like there's nothing interfering with. with yeah, that's broadcast. a good point. That's a really good point. Yeah, I, they um, yeah, I mean, I just trust our sound guys. You know, they know what they're doing. Yeah. And, you know, they asked me, do you want would you want an amp? And I was like, if you can get an SVT, absolutely. <laughs> they uh, were like, uh -uh. and. <laughs> well, yeah, they, they were like, man, that's a little much. I mean, you know, James Genus isn't even playing like something that big. He's got like a maybe a two ten on yeah, stage right? or one fifteen. Yeah. Um, but uh, but it was I, when I showed up, there wasn't anything on stage, and I was like, all right, cool, whatever. We'll, I mean, it's gonna sound. I trust it. We're, we're gonna go for it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. No, sound a killer. And you know, like you said, everybody else was on a clean stage, so it wasn't like you didn't have an amp at the guitar player. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right his now. all his stuff was off stage. So, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I sewed hey, up. Dom, I know you have a you got a hard cutoff at uh, at three. Unfun meetings, yeah. 
Okay, so <laughs> do you have time to do the quick 10? Oh, or yeah. 11 I live for this. All right. I live for this. Right. This is uh, so, let the judgment um, ensue. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, no judgment here. So, Alex, we're going to do – let me see if I can find it. Uh-oh. We haven't found a great name for this, but we – yeah. Yeah, like, I, I, is this like I, your? Is this like your? Uh, your? Uh, what's it? The Screen Actors thing uh, with uh, James? What was his name? With all oh, the, yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's all I can think of is the SNL remakes of those, and it's the oh best. yeah. I'd like to oh, think yeah. of it more of uh more more like Zach Galifianakis's between two friends. <laughs> yeah, between two friends. Yeah, it's way more that. Much. All right. Okay. Cool. I, I like that too. Say, yeah. It's not nearly as insulting though. <laughs> sure. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. Makes sense. That's fine. That's fine. All right. So you got to give me the answer. The first thing that comes to your mind here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to ask you 11 questions. Um, P base or jazz base? P base. Okay. Passive or active? Uh. Uh, passive, I guess. Okay. Uh, uh, the uh, alien stuff is active, so I, I'm yeah. not really sure yet. So I'm still that's learning. Right. <laughs> no, that's all right. And again, we kind of know what the answer to all these questions after yeah. after talking for an hour. So yeah, we sure. Just, we just want to see if like you're gonna like mess you up here. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Have all the stats. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Round, rounds or flats? Uh, 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 flats for studio, rounds for live. How about okay. that, politician? All right. Uh, B15, SVT, Pro Series, or Venture? Oh, SVT. <laughs> yeah, okay. SVT. Right. Uh, cable or wireless? Uh, cable, I guess. Okay. Yeah, um, you, get more of the, you get more of the pure tone from a cable. Uh, okay, pick or fingers? Fingers. Okay. Uh, IEMs or floor wedges? IEMs. Okay. Pedals or no pedals? Ooh. Uh, I, I, I guess I got to go with pedals because I use them. But, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Good DI is where yeah. it's at, you know. And, again, there's no wrong answers here. Yeah. There's no right answers either. So. Sure. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Uh, window or aisle? Aisle. Okay. Uh, high bunk or low bunk? I was a I was a top bunk guy for a long time, but you know you get older and your knees and ankles get a little rough. So you got I got I go middle now, but I, if I had to do high or low, I go I'll go low. I'll go okay. bottom bunk. <laughs> low bunk, okay. Uh, and the last one is black black with white piping or silver and blue. Talking about the cos Ampeg cosmetics or arrow. Ooh, Ampeg. yeah. Mm. I you know I that seventies one I played in Alaska. That that silver and blue, man, that was some cool shit. Yep. Um, yep. But uh, you know, I just when you see the black and white, you just know, you just know that it's it's just gonna nail it. So yeah. I guess I got to go black and white. Whatever, whatever you you, you could say, whatever backline supplies. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it's got at least four tens with it, that's fine with me. Yep. You know. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for doing that. Of course. <laughs> And we didn't talk about chicken sandwiches, but that's okay. Uh, it's you know it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> Wait, I want to know uh, best chicken sandwich you've had on tour. Like, do you is there a best chicken there sandwich I've plate? had on tour? Dom, Dom with the uh, chicken sandwich question. Uh, it's gonna be the number twelve question from wow. now on. Yeah. Oh, best chicken sandwich I've had on tour. Wow, that's <laughs> tough. Um, I you know um we had this horrifically long drive uh recently from uh from like. Uh, it was like from Vermont to Cleveland that took like 17 hours because our bus oh. drivers were being super dumb. And we stopped at a gas station, uh, like an area rest stop area. And I got one of those Popeye's chicken sandwiches, man. Ooh, those things yeah. are where it's at. Kind of, man. I love those things. Um, I agree. The Popeye's chicken sandwich is where it's at. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, yeah, I, I don't know. You eat so many chicken sandwiches on the road. It's just kind of tough. <laughs> Sometimes I remember which one is from where, you know, I've had some really good ones, but <laughs> this is awesome. I will say there is a, there is, if you want to go chicken salad, there is a, um, a spot in outside of Birmingham, Alabama. It's in a place called Gardendale, Alabama. The, the restaurant is called our place and you would love it, Dino. Cause it's two Greeks, the Stathakis's. They make the best chicken salad <laughs> in the entire world. Really? I would put it up against any chicken salad anywhere. 
Yes. And okay. George and Evelyn Sithakis, shout out. They're they're some <laughs> of my favorite people in the whole wide world. They make one of the best chicken sandwiches I've ever had because they, they're great. the best. So. It's called Our Place? Yeah, Our Place in Gardendale, Alabama. In Gar- I'm, I'm, going this weekend. I'm going to see if they can ship me some. There you yeah, go. Maybe they would. Maybe they would. Yeah. Hey, if, if we can ship law, if we I don't think they're on gold belly, but maybe, maybe, maybe they can make an exception for you. Uh, a fellow, a fellow, a fellow Greek. You know what I mean? Right. I think if you email them and let them know, I think they'll see the last name and they'll be like, Oh, where are you from? <laughs> yeah. They'll, we, yeah. We send it to you. Black <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They're so Greek. It's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, awesome. oh man. Great. Well, listen. I know we gotta we gotta get going here because we're we're a little bit over. But Al- Alex, man, I, we're definitely you gotta come back and join us. Anytime. You gotta, you, you gotta tell us how Australia, and Mexico was, and absolutely, you know, Fenway and all that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's right too. We didn't even talk about you playing Fenway. So um, we'll save it for the next one. We'll try okay. to get we'll try to get one of these on before I play Fenway or after, and I'll let you know. Oh, uh, dude. Honest to gosh, it's it, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Thank you for taking the time out. It's and, my honor uh, to be on with you guys, man. I appreciate everything, the support and the hang and all that. Yeah, man. man. Don't, yeah, thank don't, you and congrats. It's it's yeah. Really, thank you. Yes. Thank you uh, very much. Yeah. Don't don't go away just yet. Uh, I just want to say a quick shout out to Aaron uh, McGregor for for putting this all together. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, Haji, I Haji's in the background. Usually he actually Haji's off today, so um, he wasn't listening in. So no thank you to Haji. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Haji's always here, man. He's always typing in the links and everything. But uh, yeah, thank you and everybody for for calling in from all over the world, the UK and Italy and man it's it's so great to bring great people together on this show this this is what this is what i enjoy doing so thanks everyone have a safe tuesday and uh y'all play more bass we'll talk to you soon all right take care